Hello and welcome to Catholic Truth Online. I'm going to do in this video uh, the second part of chapter 9 of A Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, which is on the Holy Ghost and Grace. I'll read through the second part of the chapter and I'll be explaining as I go along. How many kinds of grace are there? There are two kinds of grace, sanctifying grace and actual grace. So we're going to learn in this chapter what are these these two types of grace. What are the difference between the two of them? What does this really mean? I'm going to get to the bottom of grace as much as we can because it is quite a subtle subject. I mean it's a spiritual thing and uh, can be quite confusing and uh, but the way it's laid out it says there are two kinds sanctifying grace, actual grace. Now we're going to talk about those two types of grace in the rest of this chapter so that we have a better knowledge, better understanding of what is grace, how it works, the importance of it. Um, and before we go on to what is sanctifying grace, sanctifying grace is the manner in which it's given is right into the very essence of your soul, a baptism. It's not given to your faculties, it's not just given to your understanding, not just given to your will, it is given into the very essence, it is infused into the essence of the soul, the very being, changes the very life of the soul, elevates it to something supernatural. Uh, God needs some sort of means to make you live on the level of his life because you're not doing that without that grace. Without that supernatural help by which you habitually live God's life. That is, you participate in the divine life. Really living it. Not just participating in the being of God like a stone or an animal participates in the being of God but you are actually sharing the very life of God so you need sanctifying grace that grace which makes you live God's life and that has to be in the essence of the soul actual grace is not given into the very essence of the soul it's something that's given to keep that going or to um, to get you back into that state or to uh, advance further in that state so that's a bit of an introduction to the manner in which it is infused, given. And now we're getting on to what is it? What is sanctifying grace? That's the next question. The sanctifying grace is that grace which makes the soul holy and pleasing to God and confers on it a new and supernatural life. That's the really important point, what it does. Which makes it share in the nature of God himself. Okay, so we're actually sharing God's nature. Uh, it makes the soul holy and pleasing to God um, because God is pleased with things in proportion as they participate in him, in proportion as they draw closer to a likeness of him because there is nothing more pleasing to God than the very essence, the very nature of God. Therefore, Whatsoever becomes closer to that, uh, comes closer to that ideal, is the more pleasing. So it makes it holy. Something that's holy is uh, dedicated to God. Something that's holy uh, is lovable um, in a supernatural way, in a godly way. Um, it's good and it's lovable uh, in a holy way. That is, it, it's it's like God. <coughs> If a creature is holy, um, it is said to be you know, something that imitates, images God. Okay, And it's pleasing to God because uh, God sees something in it that is very much of him, very much like to him. Let us make man in our image and likeness. Uh, he could have just made us um, natural, you know, um, left us in a natural state, but he wanted us to share in his very life, and to do that he needs to give us sanctifying grace. Um, and it makes us share in the very nature of God. So remember there's <clears throat> infinite distances, of course, between God's nature and every other nature. So even a rational nature, an angel or a man, <coughs> not only is it infinitely below God uh, in, in quality and essence, but I mean, even with or without grace, obviously we're much below God, but with grace uh, we begin to participate in the very nature of God. So that's really as close as we can get to being other gods. I mean, obviously that that's that the very 
word another god doesn't even make sense that would be a contradiction in terms god has to be god uh, god alone so uh he wants us to share in that supreme infinite happy life um and by means of that he gives us this special uh medium which connects us links us to that life what other effects has sanctifying grace sanctifying grace makes us the adopted children of god the temples of the holy ghost and heirs to the kingdom of heaven and so yeah it's getting that from the scripture and tradition teaching of the church it makes us the adopted children of god what does that mean <coughs> well uh there is one uh son of god in the proper sense of the word generated from all eternity that is of course the word it is the second person of the blessed trinity that is the son of god uh, only christ can say of himself i and the father are one whereas with us it's a bit different you see we um we weren't originally children of god in fact we uh, originally didn't exist now uh, we were only existing in some kind of potential potentiality in, in an idea of God and uh, now we exist uh, and this is still just talking about it from our way of looking at it uh, we say once upon a time we never were um, although to God um, there is there is in a sense an ever present reality uh, in which we do exist however there was a point if you don't want to say time when we really did not exist in actuality we only existed in pot potentiality so we are not um, sons of God in the sense that Christ is the son of God however through grace we are adopted is is uh, is quite the correct word but it is also real because um, it is a real sonship because um, it is really sharing in the divine nature it is it is real because it's god's life really is there temples of the holy ghost so there is that abiding of the spirit of god in us and um there's that communication between the three divine persons going on um this god knowing himself and the producing of the word and the love between uh the two uh well the love as from one principle for the infinite good which is the holy ghost so we have the father the son and the holy ghost living within us uh, living that trinitarian life within us when we are in this state of sanctifying grace and that does make us the adopted children of god because we are sharing in god's life and what a father does is he communicates life so we are um, sons of god we are children of god in a real sense and therefore heirs to the kingdom of heaven because uh, the very end is God, the enjoyment of God forever, and that is what constitutes eternal life. Therefore, we are destined for eternal life uh, by the very fact that we have this supernatural uh, gift of sanctifying grace. Is sanctifying grace necessary for salvation? Sanctifying grace is necessary for salvation, for without it, we are the enemies of God, and have not a right to the kingdom of heaven uh, it basically means that if we are not in a state of grace um, apart from after ba before baptism it means it's our own fault so therefore we are the enemies of god because we have expelled this life of god within us therefore there is really nowhere else for us to go but to be lost to, to be condemned uh, now Yes, we are the enemies of God. That really means, um, if it's before baptism, it means that we, we cannot um, uh, necessarily possess God without this state of sanctifying grace. There, because um, we, we have this, this this opposition that's created through sin. Uh, that there's this kind of um, this state of not having the grace of God, and therefore, what remains is that we we cannot possess him in the beatific vision because we need that we need that sanctifying grace now we don't actually know for sure what happens to the the infants who um, die before baptism we don't, we're not actually given to know that um i think the popular opinion is that they go to a place called limbo and that is a certain 
natural state where they, they don't actually suffer, but they <coughs> they are deprived of the beatific vision. But um, basically, it's the point of the question is, do we need sanctifying grace to go to heaven? Yes, we do, because through that, we have the beatific vision. In fact, it is actually the beginning of that life of beatitude, as soon as we have that sanctifying grace, is the beginning. We're supposed to develop it through the life of the Spirit, through holiness, and the more holy we are, the closer we come to this ideal of the beatific vision, and the greater we will enjoy that vision in the next life. But without it, uh, we cannot. We cannot go to heaven. Uh, what is actual grace? Actual grace is a special help given to us by God to do good acts and avoid sin. So, okay, so we have this state of um, of being able to share in the divine nature. But, again, it still needs something, again, supernatural to make it operate, to make it move, to make it work. Uh, so, again, another supernatural help. And that is actual grace. It's kind of like the wind which makes the, the boat sail. But we have to actually be ready and have the sails up to catch those gusts of wind um, to make it sail in the right direction. So they are sort of, in a sense, external helps towards holiness. That's basically what actual grace is. It's always there so that we can accomplish those good works and thus merit heaven because um, you need good works. Uh, although, if you die in the state of grace, Yes, you will go to heaven, but um, uh, you need to, I mean, you will have merited heaven because um, in dying there will have been some act of um, of cooperation with grace, with, sanctify, with uh, actual grace, in order to stay in sanct sanctifying grace. Um, and good works are necessary for heaven, and if we, um, we neglect those good works, uh, we will not be able to retain that state of sanctifying grace. Uh, sooner or later we will, um, we will diminish it and then we will lose it by grave sin. So it's saying that yes, you need to make, you need to do all you can to benefit by these actual graces that God gives you. Otherwise uh, you will fall from the state of grace. Or it will get really cloudy and before you know it uh, you won't be in the state of grace and you might even be um, you might slip into something whereby you think you're okay or you think you'll you'll still go to heaven uh, so it's a very slippery slope once you start neglecting these graces of God um, now e each soul does deep down know uh, ideally if it has lost the grace of God but um, uh, again we uh, we're con concerned more here as to what are these things what what is grace uh, what are the principal means of obtaining grace? The principal means of obtaining grace are prayer and the sacraments. So prayer and the sacraments will help us keep going in grace, keep increasing that life of sanctifying grace in us. It, start, it starts off like a seed, but by the very nature of that initial seed means that it needs to grow. By It needs to keep growing through our efforts to cooperate with the actual graces, to increase that life of sanctifying grace make it greater, stronger, um, make it more and more uh, the centre of our lives, make it um, uh, allow it to cause us to become saints, uh, do our best to cooperate to that end. Can we merit grace and a heavenly reward? Provided we are in the state of grace, we can, by our good works, merit an increase of grace and eternal life, which is what we are saying. Uh, so we can we can increase this grace of sanctifying grace. This state of sanctifying grace can increase in us, and the more it does, the more <coughs> the more we possess the virtues, the more holy we become, the more peaceful, the more happy our life becomes, the more we cooperate with God, and uh, the more deprived and um, miserable you could say we we become. It, the more we neglect, and the more we fall away from grace, because it is. Our ultimate happiness is to be in the grace of God and to be holy. Virtue is what happiness comes down to, and perfect happiness, of course, is in attaining the final end, which is uh, the possession of God in eternal life, the beatific vision. So that concludes that chapter, and uh, then we will be going on to chapter 10, which is the virtues and the gifts of the Holy Ghost. 
Uh, <clears throat> so we, we've spoken about the Holy Ghost, we've spoken about grace, and uh, basically uh, the Holy Ghost is the, uh, the love of God, he is the essential love of God, he is the instrument, well the means of our sanctification, I mean anything that um, causes us to grow in holiness, the Holy Ghost uh, is the provider. Um, he, he distributes, he causes us to um, benefit by the redemption. And uh, through sanctifying grace and actual grace, we progress in the spiritual life, we become holy. And uh, we need to do all we can to retain the life of grace within us and to cause it to grow. So uh, with that said, I hope to see you in the next video where we will discuss the gifts of the Holy Ghost and the virtues.